Hi everyone, in this lesson I am actually going to show you a few things. I'm not going to give you a full lesson on the art, but I'm going to show you how to make the brush I used for this. And I am mostly going to show you how to find awesome free fonts and then how to make this um, calendar all perfectly lined up, but also how to make this perfectly fit your screen so that you can save something like this to your home screen and design it just for you. First, let's go ahead and make that brush. Actually, let's go ahead and start a canvas. Let's go to an 11 by 14 or 14 by 11 for 14 inches wide, 11 inches tall. And I always use 300 DPI. And this is a good size so that if you have a beautiful piece of art in the end, it's a great printing size in the US anyways. This is a pretty typical printing size, um, but we're just gonna use this as a pretty close size to our screen. And if you really wanna be exact, go ahead and take a screenshot. If you just swipe on it, it saves to your, to your uh, camera roll and you can add it, insert a photo and it's right here. It's kind of funny to have it here. And then just bump it up to the edges on both sides and you can see this white border on the top and the bottom. And if you really want to crop your canvas to fit that, you can go to the wrench tool, canvas, crop and resize. Let all of this just be how it is. Don't change anything in there and just adjust the top and the bottom here to your canvas size. Tap done. And now you have a canvas that is, <laughs> that's kind of an optical illusion. Let's go ahead and get rid of that layer. You have a canvas that is um, perfectly fit for your iPad screen size so that when you wanna put it here on your home screen, it's gonna fit perfectly. Now, the other thing you could do that would be um, to kind of eliminating one step is taking an, a screenshot of this page instead. So this is not my second page, this is just my home page. And if you take a screenshot of this, now notice I only have icons up here. I like to keep this page not very cluttered and just having the things I use the most. So I'm gonna take a screenshot of that and I'm gonna bring that in just for one easy, quick thing to do. I can just tap fit to canvas now. And then on a new layer, maybe with a red and um, just any sort of inky or sketchy thing. I'm gonna just draw around where my icons are and then this line across the bottom to show that I have icons down here and in here. And then I can get rid of that layer and have an idea of um, where I have some flexibility to add my calendars later. So if I wanna just hold on to this for a while, then I know that um, I can pop it back on later and I can see where it's really important to have my calendars. This one's a pretty simple one to know because it's just basically the bottom, but at least I'll know how I shouldn't go below this line. So that's good. So you can turn that off and we'll just, I'm gonna, yeah, just keep it turned off. So I just always start with a few layers. It's just kind of habit for me. So let's go ahead to the painting section of the native brushes. And we're gonna duplicate the gouache brush. You can leave it in here and just swipe left and duplicate it. Whoops, I just tapped on it. Um, I already have a couple duplicates here. Or you can drag it out and put it into another category. So for example, I have this favorites category that I use. Um, just in case you don't know how to drag, you just, you just tap on it and select it that way by kind of tapping and holding for a second and then dragging it out. And then you can just tap on the folder you wanna drop it into and slide it in. Now tap on that brush and go to Color Dynamics. And all you need to do for this brush is change the hue in the Color Stroke Jitter to 5%, the darkness to 12%, in Color Pressure, change the brightness to 15%, and in Color Tilt, change the brightness to negative 9%. I'm still trying to decide if this is doing much for us. So um, these are just the settings that I came up with. Definitely experiment and play around with um, these to make them to your liking as well. If you don't know a lot about making brushes, I actually have five brush making classes on Skillshare. So 
um, definitely check that kind of stuff out. It is so fun to make brushes. If you go to my website, which is linked in the description, and you go to free, you're gonna see several uh, ways to get free things from me. So um, I give most of my brushes away in my classes, but I also have um, downloads for email subscribers. But right here, I have freebies for all people that even those who are not subscribed to my emails. And the palette that I'm using right now, <laughs> you can probably tell, is in this download. There's three palettes in this download right here. Um, but definitely go grab some more downloads. There's some fun brushes. And if you sign up for my email, you will get access to all of the past freebies that you've missed for subscribers. It's a password, I've already entered my password. It's a password protected page. Um, here's the ones from last year, and then this is a growing list for this year. If you go into the 2021 freebies, you're gonna wanna grab these brushes. That's why I'm showing you this right now. This image right here, the Posca and Micron pens. Those are the other brushes that I used in my illustration. So that's what I used here in the center, and they're just really fun. I actually just used the Posca, I think. So I am on the Spring Abstract palette from the downloads I just showed you. And I'm on the brush that we just made. And I'm not gonna do a full lesson here, but I just wanna show you that with pressure and um, um, picking your pencil up and putting it back down, you're gonna see some color variation because we that's how we set the color dynamics. So you can do some really fun, um, if this might be a background, tap and hold the smudge brush and you can smudge. This is a great smudge brush too. And I just smudge a little bit. So I don't want all of the um, texture to disappear. This, so it's a great brush for abstract flowers. If you just kind of think about petals, um, pick, our, pick your pencil up a lot so that you can um, get the variation in colors here. Go to a new color, a smaller size, have fun adding little marks, do a lot of mark making. And then of course, if you have the Posca markers here, you can do some of the dark and light, just have some um, contrast, right? So this, I'll just show you really closely what this brush looks like. It's so yummy. It feels just like a marker, a, a painting marker, a paint pen. So have some sort of um, center to your flower, right? However you like. and. I was using um, some of the greens and blues and this light pink for the background and also the black and these dark teals um, for the background and used a lot of the orange and yellow and purple for the flowers. All right, so this isn't an art lesson. I have a lot of illustration lessons on Skillshare though, so definitely check those out. I'm gonna clear this and now we're gonna go find a free font and do our calendar. So go to, my favorite is fontspace.com. But if you have a favorite font website, um, the thing I would warn you about is to really make sure it is free use for commercial and personal use. Uh, mostly so that you can make sure that the things that you've got in Procreate are all free for you to do whatever you want with. Um, if you have a mix of personal use and commercial use, you're gonna have to keep track of that and make sure that you're not misusing them. Um, I wanted a very bold font, and here's why. I don't have a very bold font here, and I feel like it's a very busy uh, piece here, and it, I just feel like I wanna see the, the letters a little bit easier and the numbers. So I'm gonna try a bolder font this time. Um, I already spent some time looking around. When you first come to this page, you won't have this commercial use um, button here, but as soon as you start searching on stuff, you'll see it pop up here, and then you can select it. Um, I chose this Ombotac, and I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, and it says 100% free, but I always like to double check by tapping on it. Looking down here, it says freeware, this says for personal use and commercial use, 100% free. And I tend to gravitate towards the fonts made by this person. So, um, and then there's there's some more down here. And if you tap on these, you'll see that they are not free. So they're made by the same person. And you can see this is freeware, non-commercial. 
One thing to double check, you can see I have, oh, I forgot to explain that on the last page. In this little window, I typed in some of the days of the week and some numbers. And that's so I can check to see how they look. Those are the numbers and letters I'm gonna be using in the calendar. And so I like how those look. And some fonts, they only have letters and no numbers. The person who created the font decides not to do the numbers, for example. So you'll want to make sure you've got um, all of that before you pick a font. So again, this is called Ombotak. <laughs> Hopefully that's how you pronounce it. And you can just tap download right here, tap download again. You'll see it do a little bouncy thing here if you're in Safari. Tap on that, I oh, I didn't download it already. Um, you'll see here it's a zipped file. I have some other fonts I've downloaded. Tap on the file and it's gonna go to your files app. In your files app, um, I you can have things organized in different ways. I have it alphabetically, but if you forget, and I see it right here, if you forget the name of it, you can always go to recent and it's gonna be that first one at the top. But once you tap on that, you always have to tap on a zipped file to open it or you can't import it into Procreate. So once you tap on it from here, it's going to bounce back down to downloads. So you do need to go, okay, what's the name? I need to remember the name. Uh, and we'll just do that really quick so you can see. So you can see it went back down to downloads. I'm here, I remember the name. Uh, so it's right here, but it opens to this blue folder because we tapped on the zipped file. And now in the blue folder, there's a lot of different things. So here's some info on it. It says it's freeware. It has a place to go find more fonts made by this person. And it has a .ttf and a .otf file. So those are both fine with Procreate. Let's see what's in the miscellaneous folder. Ooh, a readme. So he's here talking about um, donating to help support him and things, I'm assuming him, sorry. I don't know if that is a male name or not. And then um, just some more information, where to find him, where you can PayPal and things like that to support the artist. So definitely make sure you look through. I have had things that look like they're free fonts and then I get to this state right here and the info says it's not a free font. So really make sure you're getting free fonts. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and double tap or tap the, the TTF file. I don't really know if there's a huge difference here. I like to split screen with Procreate. If you have a lot to do and you just have Procreate open, it'll just, you'll just be able to do it really quickly. Just tap on them over here. Cause every once in a while you have a font that has bold, italic, uh, thin, you know, all these different varieties and they're all here and you can just tap on them one at a time. The TTF and the OTF are the same font, but different file types. So you, you don't need both of those. You just need to pick a file type. Before we exit here, I wanna show you how to get rid of a font that you don't like. So you're in on my iPad now, on my iPad. And if you go to Procreate, there's a fonts folder. These are all of the fonts that you import, not the fonts that come with Procreate and not the fonts that come with your iOS, just the fonts that you've imported. So for example, I know that I've imported a font that was called like Lost Fish, here it is. I don't like it, so I can select it and delete it, and that deletes it from Procreate. That's how you delete right from Procreate. They have to, it has to be from that folder, and that folder, everybody has that as soon as you've imported some fonts. Procreate, that Procreate is always there. I'm gonna go to our new canvas here. I'm on a color that my text is gonna end up being that color. So I'm, a, I'm on a color that I'll be able to see on this white background. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the uh, wrench tool and the add button and add text. Let's go ahead and add a, a capital S, tap enter and add a one, enter two, enter three, enter four. We're just gonna make our one column exactly how we want it. In fact, let's type 24 because that's a pretty wide number that is on a calendar and then we know how wide our column needs to be as well. All right, so I just shrunk the width of that column and I'm gonna triple tap, which selects all of it. Now I can tap on 
this box up here or the double A's down here to get to this menu. And let's find our font. So it started with an O, O-M, and I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Every once in a while, a font will go to the top of the list. I don't know why. All right, oh, that's cute. It has a little symbol there. All right, that's cute. I like that font. It's nice and bold. Here, I'll deselect it so you can really see it without that blue around it. Yeah, I like that. I do want to squish it this way. So that's this. It's either leading or leading. Um, I'm not quite sure. And we can squash it so that our calendar isn't tall. It just, you know, we don't need space. This isn't for writing on, right? It's just a kind of a reference calendar, a little mini calendar. All right, and we definitely don't need something that big. Oh, interesting. So when I change the size, it also squashes it together. Okay. So I'm gonna, for this font, I am going to need to, um, I'm gonna need to know approximately how big the font is gonna be. So I'm going with about 26.9 here. I'll just tap this and do 27. And then I really need to now figure out the spacing. And I'm putting a lot of time and effort into this very first column to get it right, because um, we're just gonna be duplicating this a lot to make our calendar. I'm gonna delete all of that and just type my S. Um, I don't know if you also noticed that I'm centered. I'm not too concerned about the color right now, we can easily change that later. So I'm just keeping it on this dark color so that it's easy to see on the screen. So I actually need to add uh, that 24 back. And the reason is I need to space these out and make sure I'm giving myself room for these wider numbers. I'm gonna duplicate this until I have seven for the seven days of the week. Now you can put them in any order you want. If your calendar, if you like your calendar to start on Monday, I'm just doing Sunday through Saturday, no, Sunday through Saturday, um, which is a typical here in the US. And I'm gonna just start sliding them. So this one I'm gonna count as Monday, or <laughs> sorry, Sunday. This one will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I'm gonna go down to the next one, select, Make sure Magnetics is on and just slide it over with the blue line. I know that it is directly uh, horizontal and I'm just kind of eyeballing the position. I'm gonna go to the next one and slide it over, trying to get it a little consistent. This is not needing to be perfection here. I'm keeping them in this order so that it's easy to figure out uh, what they are later. So I know that I have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday in that order. I'm gonna duplicate this top one and take the very top one and just slide it up. And that's gonna be my text box for the month. So let's go ahead and edit that. So you can edit it when you're I don't know if you know too much about fonts. If you're, if it's selected with this boundary box like this, that's not, that's not in an editable form. If you shrink that size, it does actually make it a different font size. But if it's not selected and you tap on it, if you're on that layer and you tap on it, you can edit now, or you can tap here and tap edit text. So I'm gonna do March, April, May. So for now, I'm just doing March. I need to widen that text box and approximately center it like that. We're only gonna do all of this setup one time and then we can duplicate things. All right, so now I need to know what my calendar is. So I'm gonna go out of this and go into the calendar and take a screenshot. Go back into Procreate and add that photo. I don't need all of this here. For now, I'm just gonna hold on to March, but you can go ahead and do the same thing for April and May. Select it, three finger swipe down, cut and paste. 
Now I can get rid of the rest of that and I just have this for a little reference image now. All right, so I have March and now here's my Sunday. So for Sunday, you can see I have a space and then I have my numbers. So that's what we need to do. So here's my Sunday. I already have an S there. I'm gonna delete those two numbers and press enter and that's my space. And now I have six, enter 13, enter 20, enter 27. Now I'm going to the next layer, that's this one. I need that one to be an M, enter. There's a gap there, so I'm gonna enter again. And now I have seven, enter 14, enter 21, enter 28. And we're just gonna fill out the whole calendar like this. If you triple tap, it selects all of it. Tuesday, now I have my one, eight, 15, 22, 29. Wednesday, 2, 9, 16, 23, 30. Thursday, 3, 10, 17, 24, and I do go to 31 for this month. Friday, 4, 11, 18, 25, and then nothing. I'm going to back up and it doesn't need a space down there. It doesn't hurt if it's there though. And then Saturday, I already have an S, so I'm just going to go to where the numbers are. 5, 12, 19, 26. All right, now I'm going to double check things here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. The first starts on a Tuesday. The first starts on a Tuesday. The 31st is on a Thursday. The 31st is on a Thursday. Double check. Make sure you got those numbers right. I have missed things multiple times. <laughs> so, all right, and now that's good. That's good. You can select all of these and make a group and duplicate your group. Okay, so I'm going to title this one March and I'm going to flatten it. Oops. And now all of that is on one layer. I can get rid of this March calendar here. I do want to keep mine in line, so I am going to just, with magnetics on, I'm going to move this over. I'm going to take my new group and move it over here carefully. And then really quickly, I just want to show you how I would get started on the next one, but we're not going to do all three of them. I would do, let's see, March, April, May, March, April. And then I would just start editing these. I would go get my screenshot of my April, start editing these so the numbers are for April. Do the same exact thing. Duplicate this group before I flatten it so that I could also do May. Once you have your flattened group, then you can easily change the color. I mean, you can change the colors of these individually, but we don't need it to remain in this uh, format, rasterize, uh, vectors. We can rasterize it just like we did by flattening the group. It just rasterized it, so it's like an image now. It's like you drew it. So you can two finger swipe and change the color very easily, just like this, and do whatever you want. So you're gonna do that for all three months, or maybe you just wanna do one month at a time. Then you can decide. Um, I, I definitely liked having my calendars in place before I finished my drawing because I needed to make sure I didn't have a lot of white underneath the white letters. For me, that's the color I chose for my calendar numbers and letters. And I even wanted to make things a little darker directly behind the calendar, uh, the calendar spots because I just wanted it to have more contrast. 
So all I did was add a layer underneath my calendar layer, which is right here. And I chose a gray. Because I'm using a white for my letters, I'm darkening underneath. And you can just kind of freehand whatever you want um, around each of these calendars. And we're gonna do blurred. Um, we're, to, we're gonna blur it quite a bit. So freehand and then select Gosh, and blur, and I've, I've been blurring to about 20%, and then changing the blend mode. You can also change the opacity, right? So that's all, here I have two layers on now. So that's all I did for darkening um, an area underneath that wasn't super obvious, right? You can make something obvious, you can just make uh, maybe do the selection tool and do rectangle and make a nice, I gotta tap rectangle, and make a nice perfect uh, background. And, whoops. Go to, go to a new layer. You know, and get it perfectly in place and then duplicate that and move it over. And you can do whatever you want, but. I would just do something that makes it stand out from your art a little bit because this is, can be, well, for mine, it's quite busy. So I decided to do three months because I've done one month at a time and I always forget. I know, well, it's not that I forget. I just don't get around to updating it every month. So now I only need to update it every season. Obviously, when I'm recording this, I'm still in February. I'm just getting ready for the next season. So what you can do now is save it as a JPEG. And I'll just show you really quick. So obviously, finish your art first. <laughs> I'll show you really quick how to do the wallpapers. You just go to settings, go down to wallpaper, choose a new wallpaper, all photos, select your image. It's gonna, some for some reason be much bigger than it needs to be and you can just do a little pinch out and it'll pop into place and I have a little bit of play on mine because I didn't make my canvas the perfect size so I'm going to move it up a little bit tap set and I just want it on my home screen not my lock screen and there we have it all right, so there's a lot of free font places, um, websites out there, and you can find your favorite. Uh, all you need to do is Google free fonts, and now you know how to import and delete them from Procreate. Create a very well-structured um, calendar, no handwriting involved. And this is also a great method to use when you're making calendar tea towels. If you're interested in tea towels, I do have a Spoonflower class on Skillshare. It's an older class, but it's still relevant and it shows you um, exactly how to make, um, how to get started up on Spoonflower and how to make tea towels and things like that. All right, I hope you enjoy. Definitely check out all my classes and my freebies and sign up for my newsletter. See you later.